Welcome back to Morrowind Monday. It is I, Nighty, the mighty Nighty, that is, the Black Panther Kitty, and I am your host for this episode. And yes, I normally play in this mode, uh, this mode, and I will shall switch to it also. But I thought, for the sake of the, intro the introduction, I will show you the mighty Nighty in Morrowind. So before we ask for another duty, remember we showed compassion to an orc woman. We're going to read the book that we got in as a reward. There it is, the four suitors of Bunita, which increased our restoration skill. <clears throat> Up until he was 10 years old, Oin Parnafasasis was in an elite group of the very best families of Gnesis. They went to the very best tailors, shared the same tutors, played in the same exclusive company. When his mother died and his father discovered that the money they had been living on was based on a thief's salary, he suddenly found himself on a very different kind of society. One that he had been ill-equipped to deal with. They were poor. Oin eventually learned to make a living at the only skill he seemed to be well suited for, gardening. In time he had grown an impressive garden of willow anther, gold cannon, chokeweed, white bloat root and trauma shrubs. He'd also grown himself into a remarkably uninteresting man. Aside from his gardening he had little to say for, his, for himself. Unlearned, uncharismatic, unathletic, uncoordinated. And yet he yearned. Specifically, he yearned for a girl he had known before all this trouble. A sweet thing with curly locks and a joyous laugh named Benita. Benita Gorg ah, that she also has a last name, Benita Gorgath. Once, when at play, he had pushed a bully away who was trying to hurt her. And the look of appreciation she gave him was enough, enough to make all his days since then worth their while. As he tended his garden one springtide, not very many years ago, he heard some people talking through the thick, tall trauma shrubs about the marriage of Sedura Indoril Pavlik Mamuna, one of the wealthiest and most respected nobles in Gnesis, and Sergio Benita Gorgoth. His heart fell. She had found another. A mere nine years since she had given him that look while at play. As spring turned into summer, and summer into fall, Oin began to sell his herbs, including some to Kenayakin Bael, a prominent healer in town. He had been a tutor to both Benita and Oin, and told the young man that the lady's husband was not very well. Oyen held back his happiness and continued on his errands. Not long afterwards, Sidura Indoril Pavlik Mamuna fell ill and died, despite all the skills of the great healers, including Yakin Bael. When Oyen came to deliver the herbs that day, he said, If you are still in communication with Benita, give her my sympathies. And ciao, said Yakin. If I could get a word in with all her counselors, they are trying to find her a new husband, and she has made it clear that she will only m marry the strongest man in Morrowind. Who is that? asked Oin. Horath the Strong, replied Yakin. It is said that he can lift a wagon with but his forefinger and thumb. You can teach me a spell that will fortify my own strength, said Oin. I beg you to teach it to me now. Very well, replied Yakin. But in return, I want your next season's worth of trauma root all to myself. Oyen agreed, and Yakin taught him the spell to fortify his strength. It took him some time to master, visualizing Magicka streaming through his body, pumping through every fiber of his muscles for a time, giving him strength far beyond the puny power nature had intended. When Oyen met Horath on the street of Gnesis, he cast the spell and challenged him to a duel of strength. I am Horath the Strong, said Horath the Strong, predictably. 
witness as I lift this wagon with but my thumb and forefinger. And he did so. I'm Nimlom the Mighty, said Oyen, taking some artistic liberty. Witness as I lift the stable that houses your wagon with but my forefinger. And too he did so. The word went out quickly throughout Morrowind. The strongest man alive was in the province. Oyen went to visit his friend, Yakin Bael. Her lady Benita has heard of the strength of Nimlom the Mighty, and has said that she was mistaken. She was not looking for a man of strength to marry, but for a man of intelligence, a great scholar, the greatest in all Morrowind. Who is that? asked Oyen. Kenna Warfel Thomason, replied Yekin. It is said that he can best any man or woman in a battle of wits. You can teach me a spell that will fortify my own intelligence, said Oyen. Oh, I beg you to teach it to me now. Very well, replied Yekin. But in return, I want your next season's worth of white blood root, all to myself. Oyen agreed, and for the next couple of weeks, Yekin taught him the spell and trained him in its use. He taught him how to entrench his mind for the sudden assault of awareness and aptitude that would assail it, how to give himself to the sudden thoughts and theorems that would invade his consciousness. When he met Warfel Thomason in the Mages Guild of Agnesis, he cast his spell and gave the challenge. I am Kina Warfel Thomason, and I can prove that Akatosh, Nirn, and Oblivion are one, said Warfel writing out the mathematical formula that showed it was so. I am Kina Zombel Makafa, and I can prove that you do not exist, said Oyen. He wrote out the mathematical formula, which proved correct, and Kina Warfel, Tom Thomason, vaporized on the spot. The word went out quickly throughout Morrowind, the most intelligent man alive was in the province. Oyen went to visit his friend, Yakin Bale. Her lady Benita has heard of the intelligence of Kenna Zombel Mokafa, and she said that she was mistaken. She was not looking for a man of intelligence to marry, but a man of endurance, a rock, the greatest in all Morrowind. Who is that? I would say Master Kambova, said Yakin. They say he can stand in blue flames for twenty minutes. You can teach me a spell that will fortify my own endurance, said Oyen. I beg you to teach it to me now. Very well, replied Yekin. But in return I want you next season's worth of Choki beat all to myself. Oyen agreed, and for the next several weeks he learned the spell to make his endurance like that of the oldest stone. He learned how to shrug off the effects of frost, poison, fire and charges of lightning, pulling the pain into a reservoir of magicka and expelling it. The lesson learned, he came across Master Kambova and the Madak Trade House. Uh, at the Madak Trade House. My name is Master Kambova, said the fellow, nudging the witch next to him. Can Alelis cast a ball of blue flame? Ah. Can Alelis cast a ball of blue flame for me? And he sat in the inferno of flame for twenty minutes before he left. Master Kambova, my name is Master Wonf, said Oin. Can Alelis cast a ball of blue flames for me? Oyen sat in the inferno of blue fire for the valley very nearly an hour before he left. The word went out quickly throughout Morrowind. The toughest man alive was in the province. Oyen went to visit his friend Yakin Bael. Her lady Benita, Benita has heard of the endurance of Master Vomp, he said not entirely proving of Oyn's last sobriquet, and has said that she was mistaken. She was not looking for a man of endurance to marry, but a man of agility, a nimble acrobat, the greatest in all Morrowind. Who is that? I would say Funkrasod Preef, said Joaquin. They say he is the greatest shield blocker and pickpocket in Morrowind. Oh, you can teach me a spell that will fortify my own agility. I beg you to teach it to, to me now. Very well, replied Yakin, but in return I want your next season's worth of gold canet, all to myself. Oin agreed, and Yakin taught him the spell that would fire his impulses with magicka. Over several weeks he learned how to supplant his own natural energy with the spells 
and how to feed the world at a slower pace than man with advanced agility sees. In time, Oin came upon Fankrasod in a field outside the city, doing his regular exercises. Oin cast the spell and approached the acrobat. Ah, behold the power of the amazing Fankrasod Prief, said the aforementioned, and prompted his sparing partner to attack him with his sword. He blocked the blows effortlessly with a shield for ten minutes, and then revealed afterwards that he had pickpocketed the young man's purse. Very impressive, Sir Prieve. Now, behold the power of the remarkable Gazuv Moog, said Oyen, and prompted Prieve's sparring partner to attack him with his sword. After twenty minutes of blocking the man's blows with a shield, a shield he revealed that he had pickpocketed Funk Rizot's Prieve's purse. The word went out quickly. Throughout Morrowind, the most agile man alive was in the province. Oyen went to visit his friend, Yakin Bael. The door was closed this time, and he heard voices within. Have you heard about the remarkable Gazov Moog? Yakin Bael was asking. He sounds like a promising suitor. The truth is, Kena, that I have no more interesting interest in him than I had in Ninlom the Mighty, Kena Zambel, Mukava, or Master Vomf, replied a feminine voice that seemed familiar to Oin. I will have to invent a new test for suitors while I search for my true love. You don't wish to marry the strongest, most intelligent, toughest, most agile suitors? asked the old healer. No, not at all. I had to make some kind of test to rebuff the advances of so many men interested in my money and the money of my late husband. The truth is that I've never forgotten the young boy who was so kind to me when I was little and so pray fighting of the bullies. His name was Oin Parnaf Parnafasasis. Oin bursted into the room and was reunited with Benita. They were married at once. A week later he returned to Yakin Bael and learned how to fortify his personality in exchange for the next season's worth of Willow Anther. Then they lived happily ever after. And there you have it, folks. Again, half... An episode just of reading but there you have the power of compassion so don't forget be compassionate of others and help them if you can now let us ask tools valen for the temple what our next quest will be shall we what brings you to the temple layman have you been lax in your duties somehow he changes his voice to, uh, to, uh, between episodes doesn't he well, anyway, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm asking for new duties, sir. A man in Surin named Elvil Vidran is a false incarnate. Um, Surin, Surin, I, I, I heard that name before. Um, it's on the north shore of Lake Masobi in the northwest corner of the Escadian Isles. You can get there by going east from Pelagiad and around the north side of the Dren Plantation. Following the roads east until you reach Surin, or you can take a Silstrider for Molagmar or Vivek. I remember the Dren Plantation. That was that place where we had to do one, one of the things of the pilgrimage, right? Exactly. So what is this false incarnate thing then? Well, Elvil Vidran in Surin claims to be the Nerevrin and makes prophecies of doom. Clearly, he's a heretic. Convince him that he's mistaken, or... If all else fails, prove it by killing him. If he is the true Nerevarine, he is protected by prophecy and cannot die. Um, you do know I'm new in Morrowind, so what exactly actually is this Nerevarine? The Ashlanders have a prophecy that one day a reincarnation of the legendary hero Nerevar will unite the Dunmer against the invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elf nation. But the Tribunal Temple says this is a false and profane superstition and the Ordinators deal mercilessly with those who profess such beliefs. Well, thanks. I will see to that. Elvil... Vidran. Elvil Vidran. Thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. We are heading to Suran. Which means we're going to Aldrun, or leaving the temple. 
once again getting lots of sands in our fur. I hate that. It's, it's so hard to clean up the sand, sticking stick to your fur, getting deep inside and you have to brush all the time to get it out. And still days after you still find the sand in your fur. It's so annoying. So there was a way from Balmora. And we're going to take the exact same way. <coughs> also, this means we need we are able to see someone again, which is our be best friend, Ashira. Ashira, good to see you. Yeah. You know, I'm heading to Suran. I'm heading. You ever you heard of this thing, this this Nerevarine thing? Mm, the temple sent me there. Yeah, I I know I know what the mages say about the temple, but hear me out. The temple sent me there, and well, it seems to be some kind of false prophecy thing. It's it's really amazing and really curious. So you might actually want to learn about this too. So I'm heading out now. I'm going to tell you about what I what I found. Bye bye. <sighs> Ajira. Whenever I'm close to her, I turn into a little kid. A little kitty, so to say. And look at that, the stars are out. Isn't this night beautiful? So we'll take the road to Suran this night. Oh, I do know why my nose clogs up and I need to cough all the time. <coughs> I did not take my my pills against the allergies and dust might allergy. You forgot about that. Well, let us wait for an hour. So our fatigue can replenish. And then head out. I'm kind of still captivated by that story of compassion. It's really this this really hits a nerve for me uh, because I'm I'm normally kind of that person that helps others and um, yeah, it's being compassionate is important. There are so many bad things happening in the world, and I think. Um, People should just be nice to each other, shouldn't they? <laughs> I'm making weird noises again. So let's restore our <clears throat> fatigue while heading on to Suran. I kind of know the route, part of the route by heart. At least towards the Dren Plantation. Because that should be this road. I mean, it already says Suran. So let's find this false prophet. Look there, gold carnet. It was one of the flowers that Oyen planted.
No matter. I can. Oh, don't don't be worried. I can heal that. I do I still have a healing spell. And now let me just rest for an hour. There, this this looks way better. Willow flower. That's also something. Our friend Oin had planted. Mm. I love these roasted peanuts with um, the dough around. Mm. brand product is called Knickknacks. These are the off-brand ones, though. By Globus. Their store brand is called Jeden Tag, which translates into every day. Which I think is a neat name for a store brand. It's like the stuff that you buy for every day. And look, there is also someone who we showed compassion for because we guided her to this place. And yet again, we brought these two together because one of them was in trouble hiding from, I think, Nick sounds. <clears throat> Let's see if we still are on the right way. Yes, we are. Still wandering towards the Dren Plantation. Let's marvel at the area and rest for an hour, and then head on. Look at this, this is the drain plantation. in the smell of fresh grass and oh, so nice here maybe you should just go and take a little rest here next to maybe under the roof <coughs> I'm sorry this is why you should stay hydrated. The powder of the nut. Since everything in my mouth was so dry from talking, <clears throat> the powder from, from the nut went down the wrong pipe. Anyhow, we wanted to rest an hour. Ugh, I'm getting sleepy. This means once we arrive in Suran, this will be the end of not just this episode, but also this recording. But I do want to reach Suran first. Oh, red. This is the way.
There is an Argonian. I think they are a slave. Uh, sorry, Khajiit. I think they are a slave. We're not that good at pickpocketing or things like that. So we can't easily get the the key. <laughs> but at some point we will go and free all those slaves. But there, this is the entrance to Surin. Now this is funny. Two mods conflicting with each other. One created a hanging bridge, and one created this other bridge. I guess this was... Well, no, if, if one is the original, then the mod should have deleted the entry, right, for for the other bridge. Well, anyway. Say what you want, of go We are in Suran. And now we need to find that person. <clears throat> Best to ask around. Well, the game doesn't let me ask around. That's weird. What's this about? Mm. Maybe we should find some kind of bar or something. Well, there is there is something hanging there. What's that? Vacant plot. This is a vacant plot. If you have an idea for its use or other just suggestions for this project, please contact the builder. Okay, this is um, from a Suran expansion mod. You talk too much out there. He heard us. And he didn't like what he hear, heard. Speak quickly. Uh, no. Sorry. No. <clears throat> A trader. Do you want something? Is this the temple? The Dunmer Temple. Let us head inside and maybe they can help us out. Ask around for this Elon evil in three blessings. And I guess they won't be in the temple, else they would be well long dead, right? Are you evil? No. No Dresslerevu. Apothecary. The Oren Manor. Okay, this is a trader, as I thought. This should be an outfitter then. Clothier clothes. Let's get down here. Up this guy. Quickly this is him. I haven't much time. So I would say we finish up this episode right here and right now, and in the next episode we will check out how this will play out. Will we have to kill this guy, or can we convince him that he is not Lord Nerevar reborn? So stay tuned until next week when it's Morrowind Monday again. Bye bye.